Well, good morning. good morning. And for all of you who aren't from here, welcome to Kern County. So this is our opportunity every year to bring together all of our energy industry, new people, to meet the people who have been here for generations, and celebrate our accomplishments, and have a discussion about the future. So if you thought this was just about talking about what we're already done, no. This summit is about our future every year, where we talk about what is happening, how we can make that happen. Can I ask the AV people this? It feels like there's a feedback here. I'm distracted. Why is that? Feels like an echo. Is, it sounds OK to you? OK. All right, well, I'm distracted, but that's OK. All right. So look, for those of you who missed it, we're actually a county in California, all right? So given our location, the economic future of Kern County has a flavor of a grand experiment and a lot of wishful thinking from the state of California. But we're going to get through it, right? Because hopefully, we're going to be led by smart experts you know, shrewd CAOs with their really, really thoughtful and calculating investors, and fearless local officials. That's what we're all hoping, OK? And so is everybody in on that? Is everybody OK with that? Yes? OK? That's where we're going to go. And I know we're all filled with hope. Don't make anything mean it that this is EDF's picture. It just happens EDF has a really good picture. So the rest of the sponsors, you're all special, and we can show your pictures later. But you know, this is a really good picture because it shows the Catalina project in the background. You can see wind, probably owned by Brookfield or somebody else. So you know, you're all included. So look, this was not inevitable. This was not inevitable. In 2007, when we had the second summit, the largest solar project in the United States was 357 megawatts. And everybody thought that was cool. I don't even know where that was, but it was someplace in the United States. And now we have 18 gigawatts here in Kern County in those 15 years. And we're going to go over some of those statistics so you can really get a sense of what that takes. But that was not inevitable. That was not just going to happen. That was market forces, investor confidence, millions of hours, a lot of them people in this room, of people working on plans, working on legislators, working on whatever they were working on to make that happen. That was millions of hours of work. There is no inevitability in these kinds of things. So let's talk about where we're going, right? So the current energy conversation at the federal and state level, right, academics, briefing legislators, is all about electrification, moving beyond oil and natural gas, transformation of communities, the new green economy they talk about. So I want to talk a little bit about where that's happening. So does anybody know where this is before I tell you? Does anybody know where First Solar's next solar manufacturing plant is? Want to guess? <laughs> Toledo, Ohio. OK? It's in Toledo, Ohio. It's about $680 million investment. It's uh, 700 permanent jobs. This is actually their third plant in Ohio. And uh, it's a total of about 2,300 permanent jobs, high road jobs, about $2 billion. Did I mention it was in Ohio? <laughs> now let's look at Arizona. This is Chandler, Arizona. Intel has been there for 40 years. They're actually putting another $20 billion into two factories to manufacture chips. I'm not sure I understand that, since they have the same water problem that California has. But you know, maybe they figured it out. They actually have 3,000 high-tech Intel jobs, 3,000 construction jobs, about 15,000 indirect jobs. And they've been in Chandler, Arizona for 40 years. So it makes sense, right, to put it there? 
But let's not leave out Southern California, because Orange County is the new manufacturing hub for EVs. Riven, and nobody tell me that Riven's almost bankrupt. Okay, they haven't made a dime, but the, the point is, is that they're investing in manufacturing in Orange County, okay? Lordstown, and then the Karma, which is a new car. And LA County Economic Development has said there's 115,000 jobs that have developed an EV for the South Bay, which is where this is, and for Long Beach in these areas, and that that is their future. This is the Carmen Reverso. It's a beautiful car. It's going to be built in Orange County. I'd like someone to tell me what you think it's going to uh, cost to buy one. Anybody know here? And the person who raises their hand is probably the person who can afford it. So who, who, here, uh, who here knows what this thing will cost? 80, I have 85 over here. What do I? How much? You have 90? 90. 91. Yeah, none of you can afford this. You, you are living in a different world. This car will be $135,000 to $160,000. Custom. Equal distribution of the future is not here in California at all. There's no plan for making that happen at the state level. There's a plan to force a collapse of our economy. I've invented a term called economic, uh, economic forced obsolescence. That's what they want to impose on us. Economic forced obsolescence. I'm sorry, you're old. You need to get out of the way. You know, it'll all be OK, because we're going to be building $165,000 electric cars that no like, there's like three people in this room that can probably afford that, and we'll let you be quiet about who you are, OK? <laughs> but look, this is a rush to judgment after a few handouts to workers. That's what this is. This is the plan they have. They don't mean to be cruel, but that's what they're doing to Kern County. You know, they're going to do it to a few other counties, too. Kings County will probably go down, and a few others. But this is a rush to judgment with some handouts. And we cannot let them plan this. We have to design our future just like we designed it in 2007. We were close to the middle of a recession, and we managed to work our way out of that by working with companies on renewable energy and oil and gas. And those are the two things that got Kern County through this recession in not too bad shape. They have no models for what to do, except some academic stuff. And for all you academics, I do love you. I have a master's degree, and I do love you. But these are models that are based on Detroit's collapse, Cleveland's collapse. I went to college in Cleveland in the 70s, and I can tell you that it's taken a long time for them to come back, and they're not back. OK? That tells you how old I am. But at the end of the day, they have no plan. And we cannot depend on that no plan future. We can't depend on that. And we're not going to. Because here's the truth. We're not collapsing. Industry is not leaving. They're all here. Everybody raise your hand. Industry is here. Nobody's leaving. Nobody's going anywhere. They may be reinventing themselves, but no one's going, right? And we're going to work together. And we're going to attract and support industries. We're going to reject the ones that don't fit here, because everybody always wants to send unmentionable things to Kern County. Hey, you should burn our trash. <laughs> yeah, OK. You know, fortunately, the Board of Supervisors for the last 15 years has said, you know what, I think we'll pass on that. Right? OK, we're not going to be that Kern County. But with all of your help, we can design this new future. And we can build on our unique talents and assets. That is what we're going to build on. So in full disclosure, there is a copyright at the bottom of Climeworks. Climeworks is not here. This is a direct air capture project yet. You know, obviously, I'm trying to attract them and say, look, I put your slide up. We all want you here, OK? We want you here, all right? What do we want here? 
We want direct air capture. We want all forms of hydrogen. We want green steel. And we're actually processing a green steel, the first micro green steel project in the West, out in Mojave and Eastern Kern. They came to Kern County for a reason. And they'll make rebar so we don't have to import rebar from Japan and China, which we do, by the way. We import everything. We want green concrete. We want to work with our concrete and cement manufacturers. And we want CCS, carbon capture and sequestration. Now, does that mean that those projects are all inevitable? After all, I am the planning director. No, we have to go through the permitting process. We have to look at how to safely do these things. We need to look at where we can put CO2 pipelines and hydrogen pipelines. We need to go through environmental impact reports because remember, where are we located? California, I know, you have to mumble it. It's like, you know, did somebody say Wyoming back there or Montana? No, okay, you have to mumble it, all right. <laughs> but this is our future. So just like Chandler, Arizona, that has this 40-year relationship, we have a 25-year, 30-year relationship with wind. We have a 15-year relationship with solar. And we have a 148-year relationship with oil and gas. All right? We're going to stick with the people who brought us. That's what we're going to do here in Kern County. But we welcome this new industries. We welcome them. They should come and be part of this. But any future that we have includes everyone, old, new, and people we haven't even imagined. That's what I say. Because that's what got us here. And we're going to talk about the, uh, what does here mean. So we set a goal, just for the heck of it, that we were going to have 10,000 megawatts permitted by 2015. We did that in 2009 or 10, can't remember. And there was only 5,000 megawatts California-wide that CARB was predicting. So you, I want you to get that. We said, we're going to do 10,000 megawatts here. And CARB said, you know, we really need 5,000 megawatts in the whole state of California. So what did we achieve? Well, we actually surpassed that goal in 2015. We were at 12,000. But we actually achieved 18,800 megawatts. Now, this includes rooftop. This includes direct generation, like for our cold storage. And this includes large-scale solar. This includes the solar that the oil companies are using for some of their fields. And these were my predictions, I admit it. And the board was very gracious to adopt them. But I said we'd have 8,000 construction jobs, and we ended up with 10. Uh, permanent jobs, they're a little different with solar, and we'll forgive you for that solar, but you, know, you need to work on that. Uh, it's mostly wind that produce these jobs. Uh, and solar is more responsible for the construction jobs. But the most important thing, and I did start tracking it, is we had $68 billion of private investment from around the world invest in Kern County. And the Kern County Board of Supervisors didn't waive any property taxes, and they didn't waive any fees. And our fees are the lowest in California. So why did they do that? Because we figured out a way to permit with certainty in California. And if your project doesn't work, we'll tell you at the beginning. We're not going to have you invest millions of dollars in a project that really doesn't work for us or in the wrong place, or you have an uphill push on it. You're welcome to process it. But that's the one communication that investors like. Okay? They want to know, are we ever going to get to the end of this permitting process? That's what they want to know in California. It's the number one thing on the, people tell me it's the number one thing on the slide deck. Right? Permit uncertainty. And then it produced $200 million in tax revenue. Once again, we did OK. And, most, and all of these projects are 80 to 90% local hire. And for those of you working in the workforce world, thank you so much. The amount of training and communication that we have between our companies and our workforce is amazing. And now they are looking at how do we train people for the new clean energy future. That's what we're work, they're working on. So. 
We're pretty much, we have a little bit of wind we can still do, and we're excited about that, but because of the California condor and birds and other sorts of things, we're probably at the end of that, and we're just gonna keep repowering them and working our way through that, plus we you know, don't necessarily wanna wipe out the Joshua Tree woodlands that are in between the wind turbines. And we're going to continue doing this. This is a cold storage. It has one megawatt. It can't put enough on the roof. So in our ordinance, you can do this with a building permit. They could put 40 megawatts on the land next door with a building permit. So we have encouraged behind the meter because our logic is maybe they'll expand. Maybe they'll stay in California. Maybe they'll actually hire people if they can reduce their electricity rates. So that's another way that we've been you know, trying to find ways within the environmentally protective world that we all want to live in to help companies thrive here. And one of our biggest achievements is our Kern County Oil and Gas Environmental Impact Report. And I just want to thank all the oil companies in here, because this is a daunting idea, and 10 years later, is this our fifth litigation? I don't know, fourth litigation? You know, At the end of the day, they have stuck with it. We have permitted over 11,000 permits for oil wells and other work. They have mitigated all their air impacts down to nothing. Now, you cannot say that about any other place in California. And they have sent $124 million in air mitigation. The city of Arvin used their grant to change out their cars to electric vehicles. You know, farmers use it to change diesel to ag engines and their ag engines to electric. This is an accomplishment. Now, the rest of you industries, you know, at some point, you're going to have to face up to the permitting challenges of Kern County. And why in the world would a company ask to be regulated? You know, now it's not because they're oil and they're not smart. They're very smart. It's because they get a permit in seven days with no CEQA. That's why. So we're looking at direct air capture. We're looking at hydrogen. We're looking at CO2 pipelines and hydrogen. And the question is, who in the industry is going to step up, bring the rest of their industry together, and do programmatic CEQA on those things? And for anyone who says, oh, the county should do that, that's not what we do, OK? The industry pays. The industry defends. We do the work. And we regulate. And so I just wanted to use this as an example of part of the things that are actually going to start happening in our future to get over this issue of everything has to be in an environmental impact report. And the reason that's true here is because of our air, because of our air background. So there's no exemptions or mitigated neg decks in the future of clean energy here. There are just 12 to 14 month environmental impact reports. But we can do that. And we've proved that we can do that. You know, in addition, we've actually, you know, retrofitted many of our refineries for alternative fuels uh, without EIRs. We are number one in the, in, the count, in the state for renewable energy. There are a couple of other places that are kind of bringing it up the rear, but they're going to run out of transmission anyway. So we're going to hold on to our number one here. So the reason that I wanted to talk about oil and gas is to point out that we have to come up with local solutions. Local solutions. We cannot count on state legislators or even our friends at the federal government to figure this out for us. Because their figuring out goes back to a rush to judgment and handouts for workers. And we have too much pride for that. We have done this before. We can do this again. And we're going to have a panel today of a variety of different companies. I want you to listen closely to the kind of commitment they're bringing. I especially want you to be nice to the panel of investors. We need Wall Street. 
We need Wall Street to stop throwing money at dumb green projects and come to Kern County. That's what we need. Okay? That's what we need. Now, the only reason they're dumb is they're not here, but that's okay, right? We need, you know, they're not here, but that's okay. So what does this look like? So I am processing uh, four conditional use permits, three actually in active processing, for carbon capture and sequestration. They have to go through a conditional use permit and a full environmental impact report. And we have to have public comment. We have to go through the mitigation. We have to figure out how to put safety, uh, safety first on these CCS. The engineering is easy. The land use is more complicated. But that's what my department does with my extraordinary team. That's 78 million tons of capacity. If all of them were approved, and all of them got their permits from the EPA, we're working with them as well, that's 78 million tons of capacity. Now, I'm a big one on these goals, right? Just a little harder than you think it is. So look, this is our new goal. If CARB needs 100 million tons of CO2 taken out of the universe by 2045, I say that Kern County can do 80 million tons of that by 2040. That's three to five million a, a year, right? And so we're talking about taking it out of the air itself, but we also can talk about utilization and other sorts of things that are going to be developed. Now, if you talk to people in the direct air capture, this gives them high blood pressure. Like, Lorelei, we haven't even gotten to a million. Yes, can I remind you that in 2006, right before 2007, the largest solar project in the world, ready, was 10 megawatts. It was 60 tiny acres. And people said the same thing. What revolutionized that was, of course, thin film. Right? They went from being mirrors to something else, and the economics of it, and the policies at the state. Do we want policy at the state? Yes, but we want them to help us. We, we, we want goals that'll help, incentives that'll help our companies, not push us back. So I, you know, for all of those, and I, I see the looks on people's faces, you know, because they're on the front lines of having to make this work, and they have their CEOs and others saying to them, look, do we really invest in this? This is going to take billions of dollars. I am, I am absolutely a believer that climate change is real. I'm also a believer that technology can work. We just need to have the political will and we need to have the market forces to get together to make that happen. And if that is the highest and best priority, we will work out making sure it's safe. We will make sure that it doesn't you know, affect communities in the way things in the past are. But we have no time here in Kern, given these policies, to argue about it. We don't have any time here. We have five years. You know, if I had my, my uh, if I had Ryan Alsop from the county of Kern, he'd say, Lorelei, it might be two. You know, our budget has to be stabilized so we can make all this happen. And we have to have companies investing in making these projects happen. And we want all of these. So in order to support that, my department applied for a LEAP Department of Energy Technical Assistance Grant. You know, the city also applied for LEAP for microgrids. And we are one, uh, there's tw only 22 of these grants were awarded in the entire United States. And we got two of them, one for the city of Bakersfield and one for us. And we really appreciate the Newsom administration's support for that, whatever that looked like. And at the end of the day, uh, I came up with this vision of what keeps people from coming to California. Remember? This is a test. What keeps businesses from investing here? Permit uncertainty. Am I ever going to get a permit? You know, everybody here can probably tell you horror stories from Southern California of people who are still three or four years into their process. Right? And with no, 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 no magic in sight. So the idea here is, is that what if we locate it? Plus, we have issues of not putting them close to where people live. 
So this vision is we're going to be creating an interactive online vision of a 31 million square foot carbon management park next to where the CCS projects are. So you can just run some hub CO2 pipelines. Co-located with 30,000 acres of solar to power it for new clean energy. And then those property owners will get together, whatever it is, maybe it'll be two parks, maybe three. They'll bring us a specific plan. We'll do one environmental impact report. And at the end, there'll be over-the-counter permitting so that when a company comes in and they say, where should we go? You say, that's where you go. You should go to that park, right? Now, how many people, if you came up the grapevine, did everybody notice the Tahone Commerce Center? Did you stop and get coffee? That's 15 million square feet, just to put this in perspective. And that gets a seven-day permit to build the largest logistics center you want. We already did this once. We can do this. So we're going to be having a stakeholder outreach online on December 14th. We can see how far we are. I've hired a real company that does climate change education and knows how to do all this high-tech stuff, because I don't. And they are doing, they have an, a science writer, and they're working with the DOE. And we're going to show you a piece of it. And then in March, we're going to be scheduling it in front of the Board of Supervisors so you can see the whole thing. And what is the point? You can click on the direct air capture and see what the various technologies look like. We're going to calculate the number of jobs. We're going to calculate through a separate economic study what kind of property tax revenue or sales tax. We're going to show hydrogen. Because except for the scientists in the room, most of us don't know what these projects look like. We don't know what they really look like. We don't know if what we're seeing is science fiction that somebody did, or is that what it really looks like when you build it. And we need to educate the public so that they become comfortable about this new future that we're designing. 148 years, oil has built this county along with ranching and agriculture. And all of them have a place in this new future. So if you ask people, they'll say, she always has to say something edgy at the end. It's just what she does, right? So look, first of all, there are a couple of other places in California that are trying to do CCS. I say we're going to be first. And I say we're the place you should do these clean energy industries. Right? That's who we are. That's what we do. We have plenty of open space that's far enough away from disadvantaged communities that we can actually make that work. So where else can you do it? I say current. But we need everyone at the table and equally empowered. So some of you were here when we had our first summit. Anybody here, you know, the first time? OK, so it was kind of a cramped ballroom, but here's what happened. Oil sat over there. Like, they all sat at their own table. And wind and solar, there was very little solar, but wind, all sat over here. And then they all mingled. Like, nobody talked to each other. And oil was like, why are they here? Yeah. What the hell? This is Kern County, for heaven's sakes. And, and wind was like, well, I don't know. We've been here since the 80s. Isn't it OK? But these were big new companies. These weren't the locals from Tehachapi that we loved, right? Now look at us. The truth is, is that our oil and our renewable energy companies are working together. We're working together. They are all trying to figure out how to make all this work. That is who we are. So here's my message to the new clean energy industries. OK? Kern is the place for your future. And in California, Kern's the only place. And you can work with our Kern industries, oil, wind, solar, everyone else. But you can't pick and choose. You have to work with everyone. Otherwise, go to Ohio. They're calling. Michigan's calling. Florida's calling. We are not going to break up our party. These are the people who got us here. We're all going to get out of this. So for clean energy companies that have a, an emotional attachment that, quote, I don't want to work with oil, you got to get over it. Because oil owns all the assets that it takes for CCS. There is nobody else. And your perceptions of who you think oil are 
are wrong. And until you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with people who work for these companies, you won't know that, right? Business is personal. Business is personal, so make it personal. Meet people. So this is the place. Equal distribution of the in future, streamlined permitting that investors can depend on is going to happen here, but it's only going to happen with all of you and the people who aren't even in this room. I really, really appreciate you being here. I'm excited for the rest of this agenda, and I'm interested in your ideas. I'm interested in your projects, and I appreciate that all of this is hard. Thank you so much.